Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to explain you about the cover test. The main heads we will cover in this video is a short introduction about the strabismus, squint. Further, I will explain you about the types of squint, manifest and latent deviations. After then, cover test, its types and its procedure. So guys, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, subscribe it now and press the bell icon to stay updated with the new uploads. Strabismus A misalignment of the visual axes of the two eyes is called squint or strabismus. So, squint is an abnormal condition of eye in which both eyes cannot focus on a single object simultaneously. It means misalignment of the visual axes takes place in a squint. As you can see in this picture, the child's right eye is normal but his left eye is slightly deviated on nasal side. So this is a squint. Next coming towards the classification of a squint. So strabismus or a squint is classified into three types. First is apparent squint which is also known as pseudostrabismus. Second is latent squint or heterophoria. And the third one is manifest squint or heterotropia. So what is pseudostrabismus? In pseudostrabismus apparent squint, the visual axes are in fact parallel but the eyes seem to have a squint. Pseudostrabismus is also known as apparent squint. In this, visual axes are parallel, that means the visual axes will be properly aligned in pseudostrabismus. But when we look at the patient, his eyes will appear like he is having squint. As you can see in this image, the eyes appear like they have squint. But due to the fact that the visual axes of their eyes are parallel, this is a case of pseudostrabismus. Next is heterotropia. Also known as manifest squint is the misalignment of the eyes that is always present. Manifest means which is visible. So in heterotropia, just by seeing the patient we can say that the patient has squint. Even when the eyes are both open and trying to work together, large angle misalignments are apparent. So when both eyes of patient is open, then also the visual axes are not parallel. As you can see in the image, in normal condition, visual axes of the eyes are parallel. But if the patient has manifest squint or heterotropia, then his eyes will appear deviated either nasally or temporally. Next is heterophoria. Heterophoria is also known as latent strabismus. It is a condition in which the tendency of the eyes to deviate is kept latent by fusion. So, heterophoria is also called as latent squint. Latent means hidden, that is not visible. So, in this condition, squint is present. but its presence will only be visible when we perform any diagnostic tests such as cover test. So question arises that why heterophoria is not visible? This is because of fusion which keeps this squint latent. If by any method we break this fusion then squint is clearly visible in the patient. Types of heterotropia and heterophoria Eso and exo deviation comes under horizontal deviation. So, if the eyes are deviated nasally, then this condition is esodeviation. If it is manifest, that is visible, then called as esotropia, and if it is confirmed after doing cover test, then it is called as esophoria. If eyes are deviated temporarily, then this condition is known as exodeviation. So, in this also, if it is manifest, that is visible, then called as exotropia, and if it is confirmed after doing cover test, then it is called as exophoria. Hyper and hypodeviation comes under vertical deviation. So, if eyes are deviated upward, then hypertropia in manifest squint and hyperphoria in latent squint. Similarly, if the eyes are deviated downward, then it is called as hypodeviation. Hypotropia in manifest squint and hypophoria in latent squint. In rotatory condition, two deviations are present. If the eyes are deviated anti-clockwise, then it is called as in deviation and if eyes are deviated clockwise, then it is called as ex deviation. So now you have understood that if deviation is visible, then deviation will be manifest means tropia and if not visible previously but confirmed after doing cover test, then it will be latent deviation or phoria. So this is a combination photo of all deviation. You can take the screenshot if you want. Cover test. Cover test is an objective method to determine the presence of strabismus and also to differentiate between heterotropia and heterophoria. So cover test is an objective method. Objective means in this method we don't need patient's response. 
So by using covered as method, we can confirm whether the squint is latent or manifest means heterophoria or heterotropia. Equipment For doing cover test, we need an occluder which is opaque and can cover patient's one eye. Fixation target It's very important that we do cover test at both the distances that is near as well as distant. Near fixation target is placed at 1 by 3 meter distance from the patient so that the patient can accommodate properly. And that is why this target is known as accommodative target. For distance target, we use a Snellen's chart at a distance of 6 meter from the patient. While doing cover test at distance, it should be taken into consideration that the visual acuity of the patient must be at least 660 so that the Snellen's chart is visible to the patient. And one pen torch for projecting light when needed. Types of cover test Basically, cover test is of two types. First is cover uncover test, which is also known as unilateral cover test. Second is alternate cover test. Cover uncover test consists of two parts. First is cover test, second is the uncover test. But mostly the examiner sequentially perform the two tests one after the other. So it is also called as cover uncover test. Cover test is done to detect heterotropia. Heterotropia means manifest, which is visible. For this, first you have to ask the patient to fixate his eyes on the target. As we have already studied that cover test is used to detect heterotropia, which is visible. So if it is visible that the deviation is in right eye, then we have to occlude the fix in left eye. Now observe the uncovered, that is the right eye. If on covering the left eye, the right eye shows no movement, then it means that the visual axes are properly aligned and the condition is orthotropia. Like you can see in the image, when left eye is occluded, then the right eye shows no movement. So this is called orthotropia. This is a normal condition of eye. Now consider that you have covered the left eye and the right eye deviated nasally. It means right eye was already deviated outward. That is why on covering left eye with occluder, the right eye took fixation by moving nasally. So this is a case of exotropia. In its opposite case, if on covering left eye, the right eye deviates temporarily, then this will be the case of esotropia. Similarly, if on covering the left eye, the right eye moves downward, then hypertropia. If on covering the left eye, the right eye moves upward, then hypotropia. The point we have to keep in mind is that the name of the tropia will be opposite to the direction of movement of uncovered eye. Like if the uncovered eye is moving downwards, then hypertropia and if it is moving nasally, then exotropia. After performing the test on one eye, the same test is performed on the other eye also. Uncover test is done to detect heterophoria, means latent squint, which is not visible. First of all, ask the patient to fixate his eyes on the target. Now the question arises, how will we decide which eye to be covered? So in this case, we can start from any of the two eyes. Let's start with the right eye. Examiner has to cover patient's right eye. Then after 2 to 3 seconds, the cover is removed from the eye. If on removing the cover, the eye shows no movement, then it is called as orthophoria. Suppose, if on removing the cover from right eye, it gets adducted, nasal movement. So it means when it was covered, it must have deviated temporarily. That is why on uncovering it, it is returning to its previous location. So this is a case of exophoria. Similarly, on uncovering right eye, right eye moves temporarily. Then it will be the case of esophoria. In the same manner, if on uncovering right eye, right eye moves upward to take fixation, then it is called as hypophoria. And if it moves downward to take fixation, then it is called as hyperphoria. Try to understand with this figure. In figure A, when the occluder was removed from left eye after 2 to 3 seconds of covering, it showed no movement. It means orthophoria. In figure B, under the occluder, the eye deviated temporarily. But after 2 to 3 seconds, when we removed the cover from the left eye, what we saw? We saw that the left eye moved nasally to take a fixation. So the left eye moved from outward to inward. Therefore, it's a case of exophoria. In figure C, the eye under cover deviated nasally. But when we removed the cover after 2 to 3 seconds of covering, we saw that the left eye moved from nasal side to temporal side to take a fixation. 
so this is a case of esophoria after removing the cover we have to note the recovery speed of the patient eye after then the same test will be performed on the other eye at both near and far distal alternate cover test the alternate cover test induces dissociation to reveal the total deviation when fusion is disrupted so alternate cover test measures total deviation that is latent plus manifest alternate cover test is always done after performing the cover and cover test like an alternate test it is clear from the name itself that we have to cover one eye after the other alternately suppose first you have covered the right eye then for 2 to 3 second you have to cover patient's right eye after then quickly move the occluder to the left eye wait for 2 to 3 seconds on the left eye and then again move the occluder quickly to the right eye do it several times while doing alternate cover test you have to observe the movement of that eye which you are uncovering if eyes are deviating outwards on uncovering then esophoria if eyes are deviating inwards on covering then exophoria if eyes are deviating upward on uncovering then hypophoria if eyes are deviating downward on uncovering then hyperphoria as you can see in the diagram when right eye was covered the right eye deviated temporarily under cover and when the occluder was shifted on the left eye after 2 to 3 second we'll notice that the right eye moved nasally at its previous location to take up fixation so on uncovering the right eye we saw that it deviated nasally therefore this is a case of exophoria similarly if on covering the right eye the right eye deviated nasally under cover and when the occluder was shifted on left eye after 2 to 3 second we'll notice that the right eye moved temporarily at its previous location to take up fixation so on uncovering right eye we saw that it deviated temporarily therefore this is a case of esophoria precautions first room should be properly illuminated second test should be done with and without prescription third test should be performed at both the distances near as well as distance fourth during the test patient's both eyes should be open as the cover test is binocular test thank you for watching if you have any doubt regarding this topic please ask me in the comment section and if the video is helpful for you give it a like and subscribe to my channel